What's going on everyone? Talon here, and today we're going to be doing another character build slash review. And today we're going to be looking at Wasp. Alright, so there's probably a couple ways you can build Wasp. Uh, the main way that I would uh, recommend building Wasp is towards a defense penetration build. Uh, the other ways are going to be to focus more on crit rate and crit damage. Uh, but I think defense penetration is a little more uh, viable for her. So let's go ahead and look at her stats. Alright, so as of right now I have 40% uh, ignore defense or defense penetration. And the max is 50, so I do have her pretty much maxed out on that, which is really nice. So that's pretty much going to be the main thing we want to look at here. Your crit rate and crit damage is also something else you can focus on with her because she is a lower DPS character, so she does need a little help in the DPS department. So now let's go ahead and look at her gear real fast. Alright, so nothing special here, either all attack or energy attack. And then we have all defense, and then over here we're just going to do all HP because we don't really need any of the other options here with Wasp because she has really high survivability due to her 6 star skill. So pretty much just put HP here, uh, you don't really need to focus on anything else. And then over here, uh, since we are doing a defense penetration build, we are going to do pretty much all defense penetration. I just have a few skill cooldowns in there just to make sure that her 6 star is always available when I need it. Um, but besides that, you're just going to do defense penetration here. So if you have enough skill cooldown anyway, you're just going to do all defense penetration. So that's going to be her gear. And now we'll look at her obelisk. So for her obelisk, we have um, ignore dodge and defense penetration. Uh, following with the defense penetration theme, you're going to want to have an obelisk with defense penetration as your top stat. Um, for this one, I had one that had ignore dodge on it, which is really nice for her because her attacks are not really too many hits. So she does mainly all of her DPS in just a few short attacks. So you kind of want to make sure the enemy doesn't dodge that or else you're missing out on a lot of DPS. So that's pretty much what I decided to keep with her um, obelisk here. So now let's go ahead and look at her skills. And like I was saying, the main skill you're going to be using is going to be her 6 star skill, the Swarm Shield. Because it creates a bar barrier where you're immune to all damage. So basically you're just going to sit in this shield and do DPS to the enemy while they cannot hurt you. And uh, basically the best way that I've found to do this is you're going to Put up your shield and then you're going to use um, your one star skill or your two star skill whichever one you feel like using i usually use the one star and then into the two star but the thing to remember is both of these skills do end with you getting moved backwards so if you're at the edge of your shield uh, you might get bounced out of your shield after you finish doing the attack so it's just something to keep in mind but you can also cancel either of these two skills into your three star skill the encouragement which gives her a skill cooldown buff um, so basically you can use the one star skill let her do two of the um, blasts that she shoots out of her hands then hit this three star skill and it'll cancel out the last shot that moves her backwards so that will help keep her in the shield and then you finish um, with the five star skill the target rush because it's another iframe skill and usually I try to make sure to use this skill when I have at least two or one seconds left on the cooldown for swarm shield because then it's um, always ready to be used right after the uh, skill finishes so I pretty much will have the shield up the entire fight so that's going to be her skills so let's go ahead and look at our iso 8 set so for her I have overdrive and as you can see overdrive is an attack based um, ISO set which is going to be uh, my recommendation for wasp is any attack ISO set uh, for this particular one, it does have defense penetration, which is why this is one of the better ones, in my opinion, to roll for Wasp. Um, so that's going to be the um, ISO-8. Pretty much any attack one will do. Uh, you probably want to prioritize defense penetration over the others. Um, if you are lacking in skill cooldown, you can roll something like Hawkside to get the skill cooldown. Alright, so that is going to be a look at all of her stats. So now let's go ahead and bring her into the story mode and take a look at how she plays. Alright, so here we are at story mode. Uh, we are going to take her in through chapter 11-1, uh, so the first part of the new story missions. 
and we're just going to bring her through here and we're going to play her manually uh, just because she is a tier 1 character and pretty much any tier 1 characters in the new story missions at least do really really low damage and that is just because of all the enemies being tier 2 so that means that tier 1 characters will have a very hard time doing these story missions so this is going to take a little while that's why I sped it up so let's just go ahead and skip straight to the boss fight All right, so here we are at the boss battle, and as you can see, we're only doing about 400 to uh, 900 damage to him, with crits doing probably looks like 1100 to 1200 damage. So the damage is very, very, very low against the boss here, and that's mainly just because the boss's defense for these um, story missions are extremely high. So that's why the tier 1 characters have so much difficulty, is just because of the boss's defense. Because as you can see, their health um, isn't anything too crazy. Uh, it was about 40k, uh, which is nothing compared to like world bosses and stuff like that, which you can kill a lot faster than what Wasp is doing right here. So it's pretty much just their defense and the fact that they are tier 2. So let's just go ahead and let her finish this out. Alright, so that is going to be the story mission with Wasp. As you can see, she is able to clear it, but it does take her a while. 8 minutes and 29 seconds is quite a long time. So you just need to pretty much have tier 2 characters to be doing these story missions. But Wasp was capable, so I thought I would show this for the story mission part of this review. So now, let's go ahead and look at her in co-op. Alright, so here we are in co-op. Let's go ahead and do a quick quick match with Wasp here and just bring her in and let her do some autoplay and see how she does. Alright, so as you can see, Wasp is a very low DPS character. She even got beat up by an Ultron, which Ultron does miserably low damage as well. So as you can see, she's one of the lowest um, DPS damage characters in the game, but she's also one of the characters with the highest survivability in the game, so it kind of balances out. So that's going to be co-op. 
So now let's go ahead and move on to my final thoughts about this character and uh, wrap up this video. Alright, so that's going to be my build slash review on Wasp. And in my opinion, she is definitely a top tier character in terms of survivability. Um, she is a lower tier character for damage, but she definitely makes up for that in survivability. So she's a nice safe character to play, and she is farmable via Dimension Rifts. So you can farm her bios in Dimension Rifts, which is nice, so you don't necessarily have to um, spend any crystals to max her out. She is going to be a free-to-play character, and she will definitely get you some world boss clears pretty easily. You just have to make sure that you have a enough DPS, and you can just get that through comic cards and through um, upgrading her stats and through the defense penetration, which really helps quite a bit. So, in my opinion, Wasp is definitely a character to invest in, especially if you need that extra world boss clear, if you need an extra clear for Shadowland, because she can do Shadowland solo, which is really nice. Um, so, that's going to be it on Wasp. And at the end of all these videos, I like to suggest a character that I would like to see added to the game. And in today's case, I'm going to suggest Titania. I just thought it'd be kind of fun to see her in the game. One of the strongest uh, human female characters in the Marvel Universe. Um, she is a supervillain, so that would be nice as well because we do need some more supervillains in this game. It seems like most of the characters added are always heroes. So nice to get a little bit of diversity going. And that is going to be it for this video, so I hope you enjoyed and found this helpful, and I will catch you in the next one.